Every year in Australia, and a little less often in many other markets internationally, we conduct a trade spend productivity benchmarking study. Through time, we've studied over 20 markets internationally. So this is an area where we have very comprehensive understanding of what's happening out there in the industry. People who know us know that we offer a trade spend management and demand planning solution that's world class. It's called the One Solution. Products like the One Solution are vital for companies to be able to manage at a micro level their trade spend effectiveness. But what's often missing is a more aggregate view the kind of view that benchmarking against other manufacturers will give you. After all, trade spend is a lot like marketing spend. Issues such as comparative performance, share of voice, are critical to understand at aggregate level. Retailers reflect that kind of thing back to manufacturers, so knowing where you stand in the industry is vital intelligence. In our trade spend benchmarking, we use three main metrics. The first is total trade spend, expressed as a percent of total sales to protect confidentiality. We show it at aggregate level nationally, compared with peer groups. We show it at customer level and we show it at category level. This table shows total spend for each customer in the Australian market listed to the left. Note that we show this information as a percentage of GSV to protect confidentiality and enable comparisons. Trade spend is all trade-related expenses from GSV down to DeadNet. The data columns are average total spend for that customer, change versus prior year, then median total spend. In the final two columns, participants can see their own data for ease of comparison. As can be seen here, trade spend is increasing year on year in all retailers except Target, Aldi and Costco. Company X follows this general pattern, but is showing quite different results for particular retailers. We present this total spend data at customer and category level, broken down to show components like warehouse allowance, TPR and settlement. The second metric we use is what we call a sales versus spend index. The basic idea here is to see how sales and spend are tracking relative to each other through time. What we want to see is sales growing faster than spend, obviously, and that would give you an index above one. But what's more commonly happening is that companies have an index below one because their spend is growing faster than sales. Now you can do that analysis on your own, but what you don't know is how others are performing in the same category or in the same customer. By benchmarking against others, you can see that if your index was say 0.95 and you felt that was pretty bad, if you discovered that most others were at 0.93 or lower, you'd realize that you're probably doing better than them. It's a great leveler because we know that all suppliers to a particular retailer face similar challenges and similar conditions. So if you're indexing better than others, then you're doing pretty well. The Sales versus Spend Index is an excellent tool for tracking whether trade spend productivity is improving or declining. The green line shows average index in that customer. In this analysis, two reference points matter. Your position versus a neutral score of one and your position relative to your peers. If your index is above one, as shown by the horizontal dotted line, it means you got more sales per dollar of trade spend this year than last. On that basis, Company X has done quite well in Costco and Chemist Warehouse. If your index is below one, it means you've lost ground. However, if your company score is above average, you are at least doing better than your peers who will have faced the same conditions in each customer. Relative to others, Company X has performed well in Woolworths, Big W and Kmart, but poorly in most others. The point here is that this analysis supports a portfolio approach where corrective actions can be planned for the next cycle. The third metric we use is something we call trade spend quality. I recently recorded a video for our YouTube channel on this, so I won't go into great detail. But I think we can agree that money that's spent that goes into the retailer's pocket is not particularly good quality spend. Whereas money that goes into achieving activation with shoppers is certainly good quality spend. We have a proprietary metric that allows us to measure 
the quality of spend for each manufacturer in our benchmarking studies. And what it covers is whether you have discretion over the funds, whether it's shopper facing, and whether it's paid on results. The aim is to try and set up an internal dialogue within our clients about achieving better quality trade spend. Each of these metrics is very useful in its own right, but by bringing them together, we can paint a very powerful picture of how you're doing at macro level in your trading strategy performance. In this extract from a UK study, you can see that this company is quite strong, but has lost some ground in the current year. Take a look at its total results. In the first three columns, we can see that sales growth is both positive and above average, and total spend is below average. However, its increase in spend year on year was more than average and its sales to spend index worse than average. It clearly has a problem with Tesco, however, where most of its readings are negative, suggesting that some poor trading decisions have been made with this customer. So why is it important to benchmark your trade spend effectiveness versus your peer group? Well, it's quite clear that trade spend is a game of relativities for you and for your customer. You need to know because you're up against other companies and they're spending and they're engaged in trading activity that will rub up against you, especially for your direct competitors. For customers, they make comparisons, of course, and they're feeding those comparisons back to you. And unless you know what's happening in the marketplace as a whole, you have no way of, of even appreciating whether what they're telling you makes real sense or not. It's also a game of inches. This is a can-lose, can't-win game very often, where erosion happens a bit at a time over the long term. So it's hard to recover lost ground and therefore very important to maintain consistent disciplines all the time to make sure that you're not losing ground versus the peer group. Many companies join these studies every year and they use it as a key metric in looking at their performance, a way of understanding at aggregate level and also at individual customer level how their trading strategy is tracking versus history and versus their peer group. It's an important basis for deciding in the short and medium term how to place your bets, how to use, use your discretionary spend.